What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back here for some more content. Looking forward to pre-season. I think the players are back, but I'm not sure. We haven't seen any content of them being back, apart from, I think, Basuma and Richarlison we've seen. But apart from that, today we are going to be looking forward to five players who we think can really impress at pre-season and maybe uh, come into more of a thinking in Ange Postacoglu's mind looking ahead to the season. And first up, we are going to go for our very own number six. 16-year-old Mikey Moore. We saw him creep into the first-team squad at the end of the last season, played what, a bit part role in the last two games of the season, and we feel that he's going to have a big part to play in pre-season, and um, I think he can really impress. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of minutes he gets because, as you said, uh, right at the end of last season, he was getting minutes off the bench. Obviously, even against Man City, he came off the bench, didn't he, for the last few minutes of that game in what was at that time quite an important game uh, for Tottenham. And that showed maybe the trust um, Ange Postecoglou has in him. So I think it's going to be very telling to see what kind of minutes uh, Mikey Moore has in preseason if he gets some concrete minutes. And if he can impress, even though, <clears throat> even though he's very young and even though, um, you know, uh, Age-wise, you would you would think you know bring a 16, 17 year old into the fray it might be a bit early. Sometimes when you got players with supreme ability like Mikey Moore, um, they can surprise a few people. And I think if he gets serious minutes in preseason and really impresses, maybe that could be a view of getting him into the first team next season potentially. It's a tall order, but I think a lot will be uh, decided during preseason with him. Yeah, I would say like maybe not straight away into the Premier League, but definitely can get minutes in the Europa League, definitely can get minutes in the early rounds of the cup. So, you know, you you, you guys all know how excited I am about Mikey Moore and I think this preseason is going to um make maybe the rest of the world sit up and take notice and see what he can produce. And I, I think like you look, I keep saying this, but you keep looking back at that Deli Alley one where nobody thought too much of him, a good talent. Nobody thought he would make an impact straight away. But then we saw him in that preseason. That kind of changed everything. I feel like this could be the same, not just for Mikey Moore, but for all the players that we are going to speak about today. Next up, we're going to talk about Lucas Bergvall, obviously our new signing from the Swedish league and um, the hype around this kid is just unbelievable. If you just see the clips, how silky he is on the ball, how confident he is, got those leadership abilities as well. The rumours are that he is going to go straight into the first team next season and I think he's going to show his worth this preseason. Yeah, obviously there's a lot of excitement around Bergvall. Um, you've seen the clips of him and the Swedish league, Swedish league absolutely balling it out. He seems like a player of supreme quality and he's such an exciting talent. But it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of level he's at. It's going to be really interesting because it's hard to judge when he's just playing in the Swedish league. Um, if he can tra translate that in into like Premier League or what kind of level he can translate it to. So I think a few things. One, what kind of level he's at. And two, what position he plays in. Because I've seen him for... Um, I can't remember, Jew Garden, was it? Yeah. Uh, he was playing for before. He played in the eight, he played in the six, he played in the ten. He played in a few different positions. So it's going to be very interesting to see where Postacoglu sees him, where he where he plays him in, in pre-season when he gets minutes and what kind of level he's at and if he's ready to contribute straight away because if he is, it's such an exciting time uh, um, uh, for, for Tottenham and it was also going to be really exciting to see what kind of role Bergvall plays next season. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he's definitely going to be playing a central role, particularly in the early games in pre-season, Lucas Bergvall. And um, when we go out to Korea, we are going out to Korea and I'm so excited to see him firsthand out there. Archie Gray is who we're going to talk about next. Obviously, our new signing just brought him through the door yesterday. And, you know, you talk about it's interesting to see the position that Bergvall is going to take up. I think it's even more interesting to see the position that Archie Gray is going to take up, in, particularly in pre-season, because maybe that gives us an insight into where the club and Ange Postecoglou actually see him next season, because there's been a lot of talk. Do we see him as a six, an eight, as a right back? We all know Jed Spence and Emerson Royale are potentially heading out the club this summer, so that does leave a gap for him as the rotation option at right back for Pedro Porro. So I'm, I'm very excited to see whether they play him there, whether they play him if Build, maybe a hybrid of both but all in all when you're looking at Archie Gray and what he did do in the championship last year player young player of the year in the championship we've broken Leeds's fans hearts by taking him and I'm um, again I'm just so excited to see him play yeah obviously he's definitely expected to come straight into the first team considering the outlay we've put out on him um 25 million plus Joe Roden so 
he's a really, really exciting talent. We know what he can do for Leeds. We, we saw him in the Championship last season. He played regularly, most of all at right back, but also uh, as Spurs say, they what they predominantly see him as a midfielder long term. But I, I I agree. I think it's interesting to see if if Postecoglou plays him at wing back or, or right back um, in pre season, if that's where we're going to see him just in the short term. Because I think that makes sense for us. But it'd be interesting because if if he, we don't see him at all at right back, then maybe that's still an indication we might be looking at a fullback in the summer to bring one in. Because if we don't see Gray as a backup to Poirot, but if we do see him a right back, that's maybe an indication that we might be done with signing fullbacks for the summer, mm. or at least a right back anyway. Yeah, I think I think at this stage I probably would prefer to see him at right back, uh, just because of the numbers that we have there, and it maybe allows us to focus on other areas of the pitch if we do use him in the rotation option at right back. And just because we use him as a rotation option at right back doesn't mean we can't use him in midfield. So, but I think for for this season coming, I think that's where I predominantly like to see him. And you got to remember, guys, like a right back in an Ange system is pretty much a central midfielder anyway. Mm. So I think he can take to that like a duck to water. And ne- you see other players, you know, Saka started his career as a fullback and mm. then went on, everyone knew he was a winger, but he was a winger filling in at fullback. Yeah. And just because with Gray, we play him a right back doesn't mean that's where we see him. And I yeah. think we'll have him a right back but with a view of developing him into a long-term central midfielder. Yeah, absolutely. Next up, we're going to talk about Tyrese Hall. Absolutely balled it out for the under-21s last season. Actually started off, off in the under-18s and they quickly figured out that that level was way, uh, he was way too good for that level. He moved into the under-21s and made a seamless transition. Ended up being one of the best players in the under-21s last year that went on to win the league, um, won the playoffs in the league as well, lost in the cup final against Fulham. Um, but we saw him in the in the postseason friendly out against Newcastle in the second half he came on and I thought he was absolutely brilliant. Ran the show. He's got very like Moussa Dembele esque skills to him. Very good close control. He knows how to beat a player and I think he's got quality at the end of that as well. So there is a lot of big. Rep- there's a big reputation about Tyrese Hall from the academy. Some saying even that he could be the best player that Spurs have produced in recent years. I think probably post Kane. But I think Tyrese Hall has got a big future ahead of him and I'm really interested to see if he does play a key figure in this preseason because I think he, he can um, you know swim in that level. What's interesting about Tyrese Hall is he's obviously a very young player who plays a position that we desperately need. He's a, he fills a hole in the, in the squad. Obviously all the fans are desperate to sign a, a new number six, a, a, central midfielder, a defensive midfielder in that position because it's a very important position and it's a position that we're lacking at the moment when it comes to um, closing the gap on, on the top three. But if Tyrese Hall um, shows he's capable of playing that kind of position to a really good level, that would be a really interesting prospect for Ange Postecoglou to consider going forward next season. And maybe we could see him as one of our options in that number six position if he has a really good preseason. And there's a lot of talk about him at the moment, a lot of excitement. And he has the attributes. I think the type of kind of profile he is um, in terms of how he plays. I think he really does fit that number six. Now, the question is, he's 18 years of age. Can he just come in and perform in that kind of role straight away? It's a very, it's a very big ask, especially in that position where it requires a lot of maturity and a lot of experience. And that comes with time. So it's obviously going to be very difficult for him to nail down a spot as our number six. But I think pre-season will be a really good indication as to where he's at and how capable he is of playing in that position. And if he is, shows himself to be capable, could save ourselves a bit of money. Yeah, it's true because he he's never going he's never come up against a level of op- opposition that we are going to come up against pre-season. You're looking at the Bayern Munich game, even championship teams like QPR, SPL teams that we're going to play like Hearts. He's never come up against that kind of opposition. He's been in the under-18s, he's been in the under-21s. And even when he did come up against um, Newcastle in the postseason friendly, all their first team players were off by then. And he essentially did just come up against a similar opposition that he has been facing pretty much all season. So it will be very interesting to see what he is like against better opposition in this preseason. And last but not least, we're going to talk about Ashley Phillips. Signed, obviously, last summer. Um, And when he was signed, we were told that he was going to go straight into the first team, which he did, but didn't get any minutes, even though our centre-backs were injured and still didn't think he was ready. He ended up going out on loan to the second half of the season to Plymouth and did very, very well. I think he got player of the season or young player of the season in the end. An absolutely stellar campaign for Ashley Phillips out in the championship. When you look at this guy, when you look at his age, was he 18, 19? He is an absolute beast for that age. I don't think I've ever seen a player of that age with that physical presence. And I feel like he could be 
maybe not completely ready for the first team to start for us week in, week out when you look at the centre-backs that we have. But I do think he's close. And I think this guy has got a massive, massive, massive future ahead of him. And I'm very excited to see how he can play at this pre-season. Uh, I think his physical... His physical attributes are there, but I think what he's lacking at the moment is maybe some of his on-the-ball qualities, and I'd like to see that maybe being nurtured a bit by Ange Postecoglou in this preseason, maybe with a view to loan him out. But if he can do really well and show that he has improved that side of his game, then maybe he can be here to stay for next season. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting because there are rumours of him going back out on loan after a really successful loan spell at Plymouth. But maybe if he's come back with renewed confidence and he's come back with a sense of I'm actually ready to um, make an impact in the first team, Again, it could be another player where he could be back up, uh, a backup centre back to the ones we have already, and we could save ourselves a bit of money rather than looking for a defender. It's going to be a lot um, decided on how he performs in pre season, obviously, if he's not loaned out before then. But if he shows that level of confidence, a level of authority that a centre back needs to be um, playing with um, at, at the kind of level that we're going to be playing at, it could be very interesting to see if Ange Postecoglou looks at him and thinks, actually, I, I could do with him in the first team and actually we don't need to spend you know 40 million on another centre back because we've got Ashley Phillips here he's a high quality centre back he's young um, and he's got a really bright future ahead of him so I think um, if he can show the confidence and the and the bravery on the ball which re which is required in our system then he could very well be part of the first team next season if he performs to the level and you know what I was really I was probably most impressed with him out of anyone in the postseason friendly in Newcastle because we, we talk about maybe he needs to improve his ability on the ball uh, in terms of his passing. But what I did notice from Ashley Phillips in that game is how calm, cool, assured he is, never rushes things, always... Um, he just looks so confident in himself. And at that age, at 18 years of age, if you were just to watch him play without knowing his age, you would think he's like in his young 20s or maybe mid-20s. That's that's what of a physical presence he actually is. So I think this guy has got everything going for him. And once he improves his passing and maybe takes those more riskier passes on the ball, I think we've got a really top-calibre centre-back here. We really do. So it's going to be um, interesting to see what he can produce on pre-season. But those are the five players that we have uh, earmarked to watch out for on pre-season and if they do perform don't be surprised that they play a key part in our season next year so thank you everyone for watching let us know if we've missed anyone out put yours in the comment section below who are your five players to watch out for in pre-season like subscribe and comment and as always come on you spurs